Welcome back. I understand that your company has not been too active in Nigeria in recent times. Why is that? Two reasons. Firstly, we, from a strategic point of view, we decided some time back that we saw a better opportunity long term in being a first mover in East Africa in terms of exploration. And if the truth be told, the opportunity was not available uh, um, over the past four or five, over the, I would say over the past three, three to four years. Um, there were new entrants, there were new entrants all um, chasing the same opportunities. So you'd have to say to yourself, um, uh, that could be a reason. Over the past three years, it's, it's a matter of fact, it's a matter of record that um, opportunities were not forthcoming for Petrodal. But, you know, these things go in cycles. Um, as I say, and, uh, and, I, and I stick to this, if you, are, if you are a useful company, then the fact that you're, for want of a better term, not favored today doesn't necessarily mean you won't be favored tomorrow. So okay, you so have to be... You have to be, you have to look at this um, in the long term. I don't think um, I'm a short term opportunist. I tend to look at things on the long term. New government, new possibilities. Um, will Petrodel become more active in Nigeria? I don't know. That's my, my honest. Uh, my honest answer. If I'm given an opportunity, or if the group is given an opportunity, can we... Um, mobilize quickly and come back? Not so much mobilize quickly, but, but can we execute the opportunity that we've been given? The answer is 150% yes. Whether we'll be given the opportunity is not for me to determine. Do I, do I, do I feel we have the ability? Then, yes, have we been a constant feature um, in the downstream sector, then de facto you'd have to say yes. Are there others who have also been constant features? The answer is definitely yes. Um, will it be business as usual? The answer is definitely no. And in not being business as usual, you have to be, you have to be, mm, I'm not honest with yourself whether you can whether you have a right to be in this sector. And I think that we do. I think we necessarily do. Whether we be given the opportunity is not for me to say. So I'm saying we will certainly make ourselves available if opportunities do um, come forth. Now, I've heard chatter and I've read a few newspaper articles in which your name, alongside other names, um, mentioned as a potential minister of um, petroleum. Is this something that you would consider if um, the government were to say to you, come and run this ministry because you have worked in it and you know it so well? Is there a problem that needs to be solved? To which you, and to which you would say, yeah. and, and I would agree with, and I think most of viewers would say yes. Can you help in solving that problem? Um, Somebody, I think three weeks ago, I was asked the same question, and I, and I give you the answer I gave that person. If you, walk past my, if you walk past a street and you see a house on fire, and you know the cause of that fire, or the potential cause of the fire, do you now say, well, I'm not going to help put out that fire because you're not making me the fireman? You don't. You say, look, I can help you put out that fire if you are prepared to listen. I think the fire has been caused by X, Y, and Z. Today, we are facing a situation where the downstream sector and possibly the whole of the oil sector is on fire. And in some respects, it's, it's, it's a raging fire. So I think it's incumbent upon those of us who have the, the knowledge and the experience to see what we can do to put that fire out. The question is not about a minister or not being a minister. The question is about what you can do to help. The capacity of that is not for me to say. It is for those who make the decision to determine what capacity do you have, if any capacity at all. Do you think Nigeria should have a petroleum minister because others are suggesting the president should hold the portfolio and run it, you know, um, using 
um, help, you know, getting help from advisors? Well, that is a model that was, was, that was um, adopted by um, former President Obasanjo, who was the, um, the Minister of Petroleum. And he had, if I'm not mistaken at that point, a Minister of State, and he, was, he, he made the point of surrounding himself with people who really did understand that sector. Now, can that model be translated to today? Then most definitely can. The fact of the matter is, is that it is beholden upon Nigeria to bring the best talent and the best ability and the, the best experience both nationally and internationally to harness that and bring it to the table to solve the problems that we have, not just in the petroleum sector, but in every sector. Now, recently, a few years ago, you got divorced. I did. Your wife uh, managed to get a settlement of 17 million pounds in the UK. It made legal history because it set a precedent in that assets that were in the name of your company, Petrodell, actually were awarded as you know, part of the, 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 the way to sort of recover costs and pay her what is due to her. How much of an impact has that had on your business? Well, I have always made a point of not answering questions with respect to my personal life and I won't deviate from that and, uh, and it's not for reasons that I don't want to answer your question, it's for reasons that I have four children and they are at stages of their lives where I don't want to impact negatively on their development. Now at the beginning of this interview I described you as being reclusive because you are, you're very private. Um, you don't give interviews at all. I think this is, what, the second one? Why did you say yes when I said, come and talk to me? Because it was a good segue. You were, if I can turn it back on you now, <laughs> you had come to me in 2000 and I think, Nine eight? Nine or, or eight, yeah. And had told me about uh, the next newspaper and I felt at the time that it was a message that resonated with me. X number of years on, you came back and said to me, you know, can we do this? And I have steadfastly resisted talking to anybody. And you can understand in many respects why, but I guess it's, it's to some extent that I felt that I didn't want people to misunderstand certain things that had happened. And one of the most important things I didn't want people to misunderstand is that um, whatever's happened to me in the past four years in my personal life, it's a chapter. It's not finality in the sense that it doesn't define me, but it is a chapter in what, you know, what will be a long life. The second thing I didn't want people to get the wrong impression about, and, and this is a point that I make with, with all seriousness, um, Newspapers abroad have, have, um, have tended to um, paint me in a light that I didn't even understand myself. And those close to me didn't recognize that person. What I wanted to, to, to come out and to, be, and to be fully appreciated is that Whatever's happened in my personal life, it's, 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 it's an accident of life. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob a bank. I didn't do any of those things. It, it, it happens. Do I hold any malice to, to, to my ex-wife? Not at all. You know, my ex-wife has given me the, probably the, without any shadow of a doubt, the most important things to me in my life, which were my four children. And you can't ever forget that, or at least I can't ever forget that. So when people are banding all these stories about that I should be feeling in a certain way, I don't feel that way. I do not feel that way. I have been fortunate enough to look at it differently 
And I've said to myself, look, this is a woman, gave me four children. Those are the most important thing to me. Whatever happens, happens. It's a chapter, it's passed, it's gone. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael Press, for coming on the program. Really appreciate your presence. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching Straight Talk with me, Gadria Ahmed. My guest was reclusive oil magnate, Mr. Michael Prest. We discussed the state of the Nigerian oil and gas sector, the possible solutions to the problems bedeviling the sector, and Mr. Prest's philosophical take on some of the personal issues he has faced in the last few years. Join me next week when I'll be in conversation with another special guest. Have a good evening.